Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Nick Alex, and this is the Wong Show, courtesy of his tier three. Now, we're going to check him out today, and I'm pretty happy with his rework overall, but I have to say he is one of the most enigmatic characters uh, to get a tier three or like an upgrade recently. And when I say enigmatic, what I mean to say is I think a lot of people are going to struggle to really understand where and how to use Wong. And it's not to say that he's sort of difficult to play he's got low cooldowns he's got lots of skills that are easily cancelable but the issue really lies in just some quirky things that he does so yeah we'll talk about that as you guys see the gameplay here but yeah he's going through here and 20 or 42 seconds excuse me on the first phase of stage nine with no obelisk he's just got a, an invincibility proc and the invincibility proc is actually for pvp i want to show you guys later but yeah he basically has um, two skills that you can instantly cancel with five and three and you definitely want to start your combo with that because five has the sort of Destructo disc that flies around and three has that crazy good accumulation So you always want to start with five and three um, and then he does really good damage with four and it has a damage proc on it And it has a long sort of hit skill So when we try him with an obelisk, I think the rotation is definitely going to be five cancel three cancel four proc And I think that is going to yield some really fruitful results for a lot of players so, you know, just ahead of time, I think that's a really good, um, that's a really good combo to, to practice using. Now, yeah, like, he's, he's crushing it here. He, remember, he has his own support, but he has no leadership. So, like, he's, he's spanking it right now. He's spanking it. We're close to the 100-second challenge. So, that means if I were to give him um, an obelisk, I could definitely crush this in under 100 seconds. That's very good. It may He may still get overshadowed by Doctor Strange and, and um, Scarlet Witch, but... I do think he definitely brings some things to the table on his own. We didn't do the third skill there because it has a longer cooldown. It has a 15 second cooldown. So we want to save that plus the accumulation for this uh, part here. Now his sixth skill where he brings the library together, that has a super long wind up. So it's a little bit quirky. You're going to press it and cancel it. And then you're going to see like nothing's happening and you're going to be really confused. And then the library is going to show up and you're going to be like, oh, sick. So there we go. He finishes it in just over two minutes. Really, really good stuff there from him. So he's so much more than a support. I just want to get that out of the way. You know, he's got a very good passive with the Mystic Allies getting 53% increased damage to heroes and villains. This is very good for essentially all content. And it, it hits some pretty meta characters. Doctor Strange, of course. It hits Wong. It hits Adam Warlock. It hits Doctor Doom. Um, so there's actually quite a few. And if you want to see the full list here, we can go check it out. And you guys can see if I just move my camera, uh, you have, you know, some pretty meta characters or oh, Mephisto as well. I forgot about him. Dormammu, when he gets a rework, could be amazing because Dormammu's lead is also similar, right? It's uh, increases for villain allies, increases their basic damage to superheroes. So Dormammu plus Wong could be a really nasty combo uh, in certain content. If we get if we ever get world boss legends or, or other content that has hero enemies, it, it you know, it stands to gain value. So. He has a lot of value in that regard. It's just that, you know, the set of characters that he has value for is not as as large as, you know, your Valkyries, your Mystiques, your your Taskmasters, etc. So keep that in mind. But, you know, we're eventually accept, uh, expecting reworks for some of these characters anyways. Enchantress, Magic, you know, Morgan Le Fay, maybe even Clea and Satana and Ancient One now because of the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness update. So we could still see more value from his uniform. However, he also has value in PvP. If you look at his set of skills, like he has a lot of offensive abilities on his passive, but then he's got this wild, you know, 20% heal with really good accumulation. He's also got a counterattack skill that gives him ignore iframe for three seconds. Now it's important that that buff, right, that, that buff there allows him to use iframe ignore on other skills as well. And then he has short cooldowns, right? 10 seconds here and then 10 seconds here. However, at least with this build, he's not good enough for PvP. So I want to highlight that as well. With 50,000 physical attack, 20, 30,000 physical defense, and over 100,000 HP. My cards are stacked. He's using Wasp's leadership to get the all attack, all defense. He's got six star physical attack and HP Urus. He's got this. Okay, I know. He's got an obelisk, not a CTP. And I always say in my videos nowadays for PvP, you got to start with a, a CTP. There's really no way, very few characters, if any, can do well for you in PvP with an obelisk, right? And they have to be like really special characters that come along once a year, like Spider-Man this year or Sentry at the beginning of last year. However, I want to highlight just how bad he is on auto. 
because I think that's really important. He is just horrendous on autoplay. Now, he's got a lot of buffs here, right? He's got Wasp giving him 10% HP and the debuff. He's got Ebony giving him increased damage to Thanos and decreased damage received from Thanos. Um, and then he's got his own passive because he also is Mystic that gives him increased damage. But he just... The problem is Wong just does the same couple of skills. You can see here he just cycles through 5 and 2. No accumulation, no healing, no proc on 4. Nothing. So <laughs> he just sort of stands there and, uh, you know, it's bad. So this is actually a bit of a problem for players because... It's telling you that a character is good for PvP, and then that character can only be good for PvP if you play them manually. We've seen this before. Icarus, Drax, it doesn't work out, right? It just does not work out. People don't want to sit here. Well, some people do, for sure. But a lot of players don't want to sit here and babysit the character every single time. So it's really frustrating to see that he definitely has... Like, you can see that he has potential. But then just 5 and 2, bro. Like, 2 is nice because it gives him the iframe ignore, but 5 at this point... Right, he needs to prioritize three and honestly a little bit of four because he needs more damage, right? And the thing is, three is instantly cancelable and so is five. So him sitting in the fifth skill and sort of casting it is actually pretty frustrating. We'll see this is a kind of a weaker team and we'll see how he does here. But um, yeah, I think that's going to be sort of the... That's going to be something that I think turns some players off from Wong if they want to build him for PvP because he does seem to have a lot of PvP traits. He's got PvE traits too. He seems to be a, a pretty nice two-way character. Um, but that, that rotation where he just does 2 and 5, man, it just absolutely slays me. Dying to a sentry is just inexcusable, you know? Dying to a sentry that easily after doing, like, two skills. He has all of his skills off cooldown, and he just hangs on one skill, right? He just hangs on one skill. So I'll give you guys a quick demo here. Let's see if I play him manually instead, okay? Just a quick demo here. I'm not trying to... You know, I mean, hey, if you want to play him manually, I do think he has value and you can definitely build him for PvP. I may end up building my Wong for PvP as well. Oh, this is excellent. Okay, that was... That was garbage. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I couldn't press any of my skills. Um, you need to get the buff on th on two. Like, that's the, tr that's the good and bad thing about the buff on his second skill. We're going to try one more time. The buff on his second skill gives him iframe ignore on all of his skills, but it doesn't... The skill itself doesn't have iframe ignore. So if the enemy is in iframe the whole time, you can't cast it. So it can be very confusing for players. Okay, we're going to do this again. All right. So we just need to start with two, and then we can go into the rest of his rotation, you know, without interruption, and then we're good, right? So I don't know what we want to start with here. He seems to have, like, his windup is just way too long. Yeah. I mean, 300k when he hits, you know? It's good against... It may be good against characters. Mm. No, maybe not. Maybe I'm maybe I'm overvaluing. Maybe I'm overestimating uh, his, his value in PvP. He's, he really does seem like he has value for PvP, guys. But maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm just completely wrong. But yeah, right now I would say he's probably one of those characters, maybe like Wolverine, where he really needs a lot of investment for PvP to work. And on the flip side, I don't think he needs that much investment in PvE to work. And the nice thing is, is he's a great support and he's got that leadership, right? So if we just take a look at his skills really quickly so I can give you guys a rotation. Because like I said, you can cancel 5 and 3 instantly. You'll see with 3, he summons Doctor Strange, which is really, really cool. There he is. Uh, and then you just go into the 4 and he slaps around. So that is, I think, your opening rotation with a proc is 5, cancel 3, cancel 4. Uh, you'd actually want to do 3, cancel 5. You'd want to start with 3 because it has a longer cooldown. So, well, that's not the, that's not the rotation either because I forgot to press the three. I missed I missed it. My nail got in the way. But yeah, I love the destructo disc. It reminds me of Krill Krillin so much. But yeah, you would do that, and then I think you would do when four is done. You would do one cancel two, and then in the middle of the two skill, he actually goes up on his staff and looks. He does the Wukong pose. So I think what you would do is three five four, and then when you're done with four at the end, you would do one two, and then when he's posing. You would go back into three, five, four. I think that that might allow you to do all of that, which is actually really cool because the second skill having a gap in the middle means that it won't trigger your next proc with those hits, right? Because the hits are sort of um, front and back ended and the middle is just empty. So I'm going to swap him over to a proc now and we're going to see how easily he procs and we're going to see how he could do stage 19. One more key thing to highlight about Wong before we get into the gameplay here is I have a max HP 140 proc obelisk. Now you're looking at this. And it's actually a really good flex pick, 
a really good flexible obelisk for you know lower uh you know newer accounts and lower ending spenders because the max hp gives him defenses the fire resist is good against mephisto as a, as a defensive tool and then the proc is i mean it should be it could be higher it could be 180 200 proc but he doesn't need crit rate or crit damage at all so that's really the highlight here is even with no crit rate and no crit damage on his uh obelisk he can still cap the stats because he has so many um, passive stat countings on uh master of Kamratash. 50 percent crit damage then he also has the 40 percent guaranteed crit rate 40 percent guaranteed crit rate is so disgusting he could he could honestly work with a ctp of rage although i don't think he needs it but you have so much flexibility with this build which is what i really like about wang he's not going to go as high or he's not going to do as much damage as wanda and strange so people are gonna sort of look down on him or be like oh yeah wong he's kind of like the side character of the update you know he's a little bit better than america chavez but he's actually really good and he's actually really flexible and then remember even if you don't use him to play you still have the passive that you can use to buff other characters so that's dope so yeah i just wanted to highlight those stats and just how crazy you can get like if you wanted to go with something else you could go with like fire resist and ignore dodge that would be even better in my opinion because then the ignore dodge would help against null and ultron and the fire resist would help against mephisto but anywho enough talk let's get into it so i changed my mind we're gonna try stage 24 of mephisto we're gonna go even higher here and we're gonna see what he can do damage wise that looks pretty good okay let's see and so with the tier three you're just gonna want to splash it in at the end after you've waited you sort of you know there so you're gonna want to basically do uh three five three six uh four and do it that way now you may your your library attack oh he's already in the next phase no way the library attack may trigger your next proc prematurely no way wow okay true six five three four all canceled yo look at that and now we're gonna run away and it's gonna continue to do damage now here is where a ctp of rage would be nice because if it triggers his proc which i think it did yeah if it triggers his proc it's okay it's fine but look how tanky he is right with that fire resist you can also if you want to uh build up your tier three more aggressively you could do um you know five cancel one cancel two cancel three cancel um four or three cancel one cancel two cancel five cancel four i know it's a lot of canceling Okay, one thing maybe is he's a he's a tiny bit slow. Not that slow. But just a tiny bit. Oh, I think we proc'd early there, did we? I don't know. The damage is still really good though. I should not have done one. Yeah, don't let the one play out. Yeah. Don't let the one that was my mistake. Don't let the one play out because that will trigger your proc because one is sort of like four. It just has a lot of hits. But look how much damage I'm taking damage in the hundreds. Absolutely wild. We're gonna save the tier three. Oh, did we not do enough damage? Okay, there we go. This is great, dude. Stage 24 with a 140 proc. Wow. And so easy to play. So easy to proc on. So with no chain hit damage and no ignore dodge, he's an excellent candidate for a CTP of energy, in my opinion. Okay, got to be careful here. Okay, I had to switch there because I got caught in some animations. That's that's the other tricky thing for Wong is you have to be careful. Sometimes you get caught in animations because his four has a really long animation. Um, and then you are sort of stuck um, <laughs> attacking there when you're not intending to. But yeah, these short cooldowns, man. I love it. And he's got really long. Like the AoE on five is amazing. And the AoE on six, as you're about to see, is also amazing. Look at the AoE on six. It's covering like more than half of the arena. Oh man, I'm actually I'm actually falling in love with Wong right now. And there's nothing wrong with that. I had to make one joke, okay? I had to make at least one Wong joke. I'm sorry. Does he have debuff immunity on a skill? Th okay, so there I did five, three, six, four. Wow, two minutes left. He absolutely crushed that stage. So you could do that stage probably without Crescent lead. You could bring in like a regular, you know, 30% lead, or you could even just use a waves lead and use no, no other, like just some random third. Like I could definitely get that done like that. Wow. I really like Wong. Like I said, I think he's going to be overshadowed by Dr. Strange and Wanda, but I feel like he has a lot of value and I feel like this, this passive is tricky, man. 
I feel like this passive, we're going to underestimate it. And it's going to it's going to rear, you know, maybe not now, but in a couple of months or whatever, we're going to see some really nice uses for it. So, yeah, not everyone's first option for a, a speed tier three. But in my opinion, I think he's one of the best. You know, he may have a little bit less damage than, than Captain Falcon or Hawkeye, and he may not be as good as Spider-Man for PvP, but I think he's one of the most balanced, and he does, you know, everything well kind of thing. Super easy to play. Really, really nice animations as well. I'm loving it. I'm loving Wong. Yes, sir. Screw Morbius. <laughs> Anywho, guys, hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of Wong. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Smash the like buttons, keep the channel going, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.